Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Illinois Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. Uh, my name is Brianna, and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I did just want to share a few housekeeping items. Um, your camera and microphone are off. Um, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to type your questions to any of our presenters at any time throughout the presentation. Um, they will be able to uh, answer those um, live. Um, this is just one of many different sessions happening both today and uh, later in the week. So be sure to check the schedule on the website. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available um, later at strivescan.com slash Illinois. Um, I uh, would like to um, pass this over to our first um, panelist, um, and so we will welcome um, the University of East London, and I will stop sharing my screen. All right, guys, thanks for meeting with us today. Um, nice to have you here today. Um, so my name is Tom. I'm from the University of East London, and I'm part of the America's recruitment team. Oh, what's happening here? Why isn't that moving? Easy, we're moving. Um, so we're based in London. So why would you want to come and study in London? So both, both. Um, sorry, I just put my time on. Uh, most major businesses operate from London, so like most major like offices, organizations will have businesses, places to work in London. It's a great place to come and study. And also, if you think about afterwards when you're graduate, graduating, it's a great place to come and like live your life and work and study. Um, at the minute, as part of the work study visa, you can work up to 20 hours a week during term time and then 40 hours outside of term time. So that's great to think about if you need to raise any extra cash. Um, while you're at the university uh, or during the summertime, if you need to stay, if you're going to stay in the UK, if you're going to stay in London, just to get some extra pocket money or some extra experience while you're in London, um, working for like an organisation, doing an internship or anything like that. London as well has like sort of great um, aspects to it. Like I live in London, I love living here. There's over 300 languages spoken in London. It's such a diverse city. Like if you go anywhere in London, there's so many different things and places to see and things to do. Um, I live in a place called Tootin down in South London, like there's a massive Indian, Indian and like Pakistani back, um, population down here. So it's great for getting a curry or things like that. Or you can go to different areas and get different food, uh, like Nigerian food and stuff like that. So there's food from all over the world and things to do here. There's always things happening, like there's top level sports teams, venues. If you like Premier League football and things like that, there's loads of teams to go see that. Got a picture of Wimbledon there, Emma Raducanu who smashed it in the US Open recently. Um, so you could go see her in the summertime. It's really easy to get tickets. You just need to apply. Um, and obviously we've got over a thousand registered museum and galleries in London and a lot of those are free. Uh, we've got a picture of the campus there. So if you can see like the big circle in the middle of the road there, that's a tube station. So that's part of the underground system. So in London, um, it's very connected with, it's a bit like the metro system or like the subway in New York. It connects all of London up. Um, so it's easy as you can see, like you'd arrive straight on campus from the tube station. Um, the circular buildings out towards the river there, that's the River Thames, obviously very famous, that's our accommodation. Uh, and then you've got all our other university buildings there. So that's our main campus, our Docklands campus, but we do have two other campuses at Stratford uh, and one nearby as well. Um, but as you can see, it's quite a deciduous kind of leafy sort of area, quite housing residential nearby. So it's not too loud, but it's about 20 minutes to get into like central London. So like if you think about like Tower Bridge, things like that. Uh, the things you might have seen in like the movies and on the TV it takes about that long to get there. Um, so why the University of East London in particular? So we've been around since 1898, so we're quite an old, prestigious um, university. Uh, we have a student population of 17,000 students, of which 20% 20, uh, 20 are international students. So again, seeing how diverse London is, we're obviously very diverse as well on our campus and we celebrate that. Uh, we were ranked uh, first in the UK for international support and visa advice. So if you come with us, you're going to get support the whole way through the process. I know it's quite hard and quite difficult to think about as an international student, how you're going to do all the visa and get all that organised, but we'll support you all the way through with that. Um, and then one of the only universities in London to offer on-campus accommodation, which we're really proud about. So like I sort of showed in that picture there, we do have accommodation on campus. And uh, obviously, key as well, if you're coming from the US, we do accept FAFSA. 
So if you want to bring those loans over to the UK, we can accept those and help you with the with the paperwork. We have our own uh, federal aid team that can help you with all that. Um, again, like coming back to careers, I was talking about careers. That's a big thing for you guys. Like you're not just coming to learn, that you want to make sure that you're prepared for when you leave university, um, that you're ready for the world of work. Um, so we have like careers passports for students. So getting tangible skills uh, that employers require and getting you ready for the world of work. So each year you during your studies, you'd also take on uh, mental wealth modules um, and these would be um, specially made for each course so defined to you and um, what you were studying uh, like bespoke you might say um, and you'll learn like cognitive intelligence uh, social intelligence digital proficiency like learning these sorts of skills like these hands-on skills to get you ready for the world of work after you leave university uh, and every uh, student at UEL also has access to Amazon web services um, so again, it gives you learning in like cloud computing and gives you access to fast track interview opportunities for jobs again and internships afterwards. So again, that's a really good tool, really useful tool and something to look into and something to think about. Because um, again, it's not just about the study, it's about like where that's going to take you and what you can do with it. Uh, another thing to think as well, like in London, I'm not sure if it's been completely ratified yet, but they were talking about, so when you've been studying in London, uh, you'd be able to stay on like a work visa afterwards. I think they were still confirming that. I'm not too sure it's been too fully confirmed yet, but um, that's something to look out for as well. Um, graduate sooner and save money. So applying to UL is absolutely free. So if you apply via um, the university website directly or via the Common App, it's completely free. You can also apply via UCAS, but there's a small fee with that. Applications are open until July 2022, so you've got plenty of time. You should receive an addition in about two or four weeks once you send one in. Uh, we've got international scholarships, so that's between one and four thousand pounds available. So that help you with your studies. Graduating three years instead of four, so generally a university degree in the UK would be three years instead of four. So you're going to get out of the, uh, out of university sooner, get on the jabs either quicker. Uh, and first year tuition is normally around nineteen thousand dollars, so that's about eight to twenty four thousand dollars cheaper than it is in the US on average. Um, Here's a little view of like our schools, guys, but I just advise going on our website, checking out the courses, www.uel.ac.uk, checking out what we've got on there. Um, we do have like sports at UEL, so ranked among the top three in, the unit in London for sports, and we do offer sports scholarships as well. Uh, a little view of the accommodation there. Uh, so we've got private rooms, private bathrooms, don't share like in the US, and um, prices start at 8000 a year. Um, a little view of the entry requirements there. So we've got a GPA of 3.0, uh, SAT 1070, ACT 2.23 or three AP scores. So you just need one of those three along with the GPA. Easy. Cheers for listening, guys. If you've got any questions yet, stick them in. I can answer them. That's our email. So America's at ueldacuk Cheers for your time. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tom. And next, we will hear from the University of Roehampton. Hi everyone, let me just share my screen here. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. All right, so I am Haley Drogas. I am the regional manager for the University of Roehampton and I am based in the US. And a little bit about University of Roehampton, we are considered London's campus university. We have a beautiful Parkland campus located in Southwest London. And you really get best of both worlds because you have everything that a traditional university campus has to offer on site, but then you also have everything um, around London at your fingertips. So a little bit more about Roehampton in terms of facts and figures. We have approximately 9,000 students um, enrolled within one academic year. And of that, we have 146 nationalities represented and 20% of our 9,000 students are considered overseas students. So that would include our US students. And then we have six academic departments, which we will get into. And two of my favorite parts about Roehampton are that we are one of the oldest universities in the UK, um, specifically from our Whitelands College, which is dating back 180 years. And we are ranked fifth among London universities for overall student satisfaction. And then on this slide, you can see where we are in proximity to central London. So, uh, you can see the green building is Roehampton. We're right near Wimbledon for any tennis fans. And our Whitelands College overlooks the Royal Richmond Park. 
And then we are a very quick commute um, right up the River Thames, which is the Green Squiggly Line over towards what you would consider central London. Um, by bus, it's between a 20 to 30 minute commute and by train, typically between 15 to 25 minutes. And on this slide, you can see a graphic of what our beautiful campus looks like. So three of our four historic colleges are located on this part of campus. Our oldest college, the Whitelands College, again, is located about a 10 minute walk west. And if you scan that QR code, it will take you to our virtual tour on our website. And then a little bit more about our um, undergraduate program offerings. So as I said, we have six academic um, departments. And of those, some of our more popular programs for US students include zoology, our psychology programs. We're one of the top ranking dance schools in the UK for university level um, dance programs. And then of course, a lot of US students like to come for things like business, creative writing, English literature, and film. And a little bit about our undergrad entry requirements. Um, just a reminder again, it was on the last slide, but our, our undergraduate degrees are only three years in length in the UK. So that alone will of course save students money um, as well as time in completing their degree. Or one of my favorite things to consider is that by the time um, that your friends in the US could be completing their undergraduate degree, you may have completed your undergraduate and postgraduate degree. So something to think about, um, which is of course the perk of studying in the UK. But in terms of our entry requirements for application, we typically look for between a 2.8 to a 3.0 on your high school transcripts. And we are test optional. However, if you did a great job, of course, we will consider those. They can always help your application, but will never hurt your application for consideration. And then our life science programs and our English and creative writing programs do require more requirements typically an AP with a three of four or higher in a relative topic. And of course our dance programs are going to require either an in-person or video audition. We are on the UCAS application, which of course is basically like the UK version of the Common App. And then we also have a free application on our website, which I always recommend because it's free. And you're going to be applying with the same things that you would at most schools. So we're looking for those transcripts, letters of recommendation, a personal statement. Um, so pretty much everything that you're going to um, need to apply to most universities. And we do have rolling admissions, so there aren't any hard deadlines, which is always a great um, perk. In terms of overall cost, um, as you can see, our international students typically pay around 13,474 pounds per academic year, um, but we did put the estimate on there for US dollar equivalent and overall costs, including accommodation. So on average, our US students pay around 35,000 US dollars per academic year. But again, don't forget, you're typically only multiplying that number by three instead of four years, which does save you a lot. And we do have a lot of scholarships available. A lot of our US students end up getting a merit-based scholarship ranging from 1,000 up to 4,000 pounds off your annual tuition. And we have some very unique scholarships as well, like our eSports scholarship. And of course we are on FAFSA. 66% um, of the research done at University of Northampton is the world-class standard. And in some of our departments as listed, 100% um, of the research done in those departments is the world-class standard. So we're very proud of being a top research institution in the UK. And we do have beautiful on-campus accommodation, of course, and everyone gets single bedroom. And then we have a plethora of different things available on campus for college life and of course, competitive sports. And I will go ahead and finish up here. There's the last slide. I will put my email into the chat and thank you all so much for your time. Wonderful, thank you so much, Haley. Um, next, we will hear from the University of Dundee. Hi there, guys. Just let me share my screen for you. There we are. Um, well, good, good afternoon and good evening from Scotland. My name is Paul McBean. I'm the Senior International Officer for the Americas here at the University of Dundee. I thought I would start with giving you a little bit of information about the university, just to get you an idea of the history, where we are today, and also a wee bit about Scotland and its education system. 
The University of Dundee actually is, has links back to 1881 when it was founded as a college of the University of St Andrews. St Andrews is a university about 20 minutes from Dundee and we were founded to create a greater level of opportunity for people to come and study with us. At the same time, the university also was tasked with bringing more women into a higher education in Scotland at that time. So that ethos of broadening and well, you know, widening access and, and offering new opportunities for people is something that the university is still very proud of today and makes sure that that kind of underlines a lot of our ambitions. The university is a top 250 ranked institution in the Times Higher Education. And like the US, we do four year degrees with a great level of flexibility. One of the major differences in Scotland is that our degrees are four years, but we don't have general ed. So for instance, if you're a major, a, a history major like I was, you don't have to do chemistry or math. You do history, you do politics, you do international relations. The idea is that, that flexibility gives you the four years to try things, but study your major from year one. We have around 14,000 students with over 100 different nationalities. And I apologize, that slide should say we actually have 18 to, or 19% actually now of our students coming from outside the UK. We're on Common App as well as direct applications, and we're FAFSA approved as well as having scholarships for US students where you can get up to 5,000 pounds off the cost of your tuition every year of your studies. The University of Dundee is a campus-based university within the city of Dundee. Dundee is the fourth largest city in Scotland with a population of around 150,000 people. So I have been working at the university now for seven months. So I have become very accustomed to this campus in quite a short period of time. And hopefully you would too. By having a campus in the city with all your facilities, you've got your accommodation, your teaching and learning spaces, your students union and your sports facilities. And having the benefit of only being five or 10 minutes away from the main heart of the city gives you the best of both worlds. You will come to Scotland and find that Dundee is ideally located to explore the rest of the country. No other major city or major town is any further than two hours from Dundee. So when you come to Dundee, you will have a great time in the city, but also use its strategic position to travel to Edinburgh, to Aberdeen, to Glasgow, to the Highlands. And you can also get access to the rest of the UK and Europe very easily. In here, you will see a number of our academic schools. And if you wish, you can um, uh, scan that QR code and that will take you to our online prospectus. Dundee really offers something for everybody. The only things we don't really offer are things in the culinary arts and theatre. So pretty much everything else, you can do some form of it at Dundee. We have a world-class art and design school, which is ranked number one in Scotland. Our life science department is one of Europe's leading research institutions. As well as that, a lot of our students come to do things in social sciences, um, humanities, and science and engineering. The great thing about Dundee is you will be able to work directly with the academics who research these topics, who influence change in the world, and you will learn from them. We don't want you just to come and hear. We want you to get involved in the labs. We want you to get involved in your research. And whether it's art, business, or medicine, you'll always have that opportunity to develop your practical skills and your research skills. When coming to Scotland, you will have an opportunity to be part of a country that has a great tradition, great cultures, and a very multicultural society in 2021. Student life is great in Dundee, and it's very much shaped around what you want it to be. There is not one thing on campus that all our students do. So for instance, if you're not a big sports fan, you don't need to care about the soccer game that happens on campus. You can get involved with as much or as little in our societies and sports team as you wish. We have around 190 societies, and 50 different sports teams and a great number of facilities. So if you're looking just to relax, if you find the gym helpful, or maybe you want to play intramural soccer with friends or hire a space for maybe a, a society, it's very easy to do so. The Dundee Uni University Students Association is ranked number one in Scotland and third in the UK and is at the heart of all student life activities. The facilities on the union are amazing. So you can use them for meeting spaces, for coffees, for nights out and really build a great social life to help you with your studies. Now, over the last 18 months, I'm sure you're aware, the university, not only here in Dundee, but across the world, have really had to you know, support our students and staff through quite a challenging time. In here, you will see that the university has a wide range of student support services. The one thing to remember is that in Dundee, we don't have international student support services, we have student support services. 
Now, some of it may be more tailored to an international student, so things like visa advice and those practicalities, but all of our support services are available to all of our students. You, everyone is given an academic advisor, so for, throughout the four years you will work with them and they will help you know, with any academic matters that may arise, as well as any personal matters. When coming to Dundee, it is a community. I'm new, I have found it very easy to get to know people, and I'm sure you would too. Uh, in here is just my email address, so please do get in touch. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to help. And if you'd like to know more about Dundee or indeed Scotland, I'd be more than happy to hear from you and help you start that journey. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Um, next, we will hear from Newcastle University. Hi, everybody. My name is Thomas Day, and I'm the recruitment manager for North America at Newcastle University. So I'm going to start to tell you a little bit, first of all, about the city that we're based in. Newcastle is really well known in the UK as being a very lively, friendly student city. Um, we are considered to be the capital of the northeast of England. And we're located there where that red dot is, uh, red pin is, sorry. London, for reference, is the gold star in the southeast there. Um, although it does look quite far, Newcastle is really well connected to uh, London by a direct train. It's just under three hours, or for those of you who are, have been to California, it's closer. Uh, there's, the distance between LA and San Fran is, is further than the distance between Newcastle and London. We are also really well connected to uh, Edinburgh. That's just an hour and a half way by train. Um, Manchester, Birmingham, Liverpool, Leeds, all the other major cities in the UK are also uh, just a short train ride away. We are also really lucky as well to have our own international airport just 20 minutes away from the campus and from there you can fly to 80 different destinations around Europe and further afield and those include places like Paris, Amsterdam, um, London Heathrow, Frankfurt and Dubai. Newcastle is very well known, like I said, as being a student city and we're often ranked in the top five best student cities in the UK um, and we are this year ranked in the top 50 globally as well. Um, we are a very affordable place to study um, and we're also very safe as well um, and the locals known as Geordies are known as being very friendly people. Newcastle isn't just a great place to study though, it's also a hub for innovation, for technology, for manufacturing and the arts. And lots of our students stay here after graduation to start their careers. The UK probably has a, rec a reputation for being a bit rainy, but actually we are quite a dry city and we have less rain than DC, than Mexico City, than Cape Town, than New York. So places that you might consider to be sunny um, and not get so much rain, we actually get less rain than they do. Um, and as a result of that, it's, it means you can really enjoy the close, uh, the nature that we have that surrounds the city, um, including some wonderful beaches that are just a short ride away by Metro. We actually have the second largest Metro system in the UK after the uh, underground in London and we also have some beautiful architecture both in the city and in the wider region. The northeast actually has more castles than anywhere else in England. Just to give you an example of some of the beautiful sites, we have Gray's Monument there in the heart of the city centre, we've got Long Sands Beach in the top right there, you can go kayaking on the river um, Tyne and you can go and see um, places like Bamborough Castle which is about an hour away from Newcastle. The campus itself is located very much in the heart of the city. You can see the two gold shapes in the bottom left and right. Those are where we have our campus buildings. Um, and then the grey rectangle in the middle is where all of the main shops, restaurants, bars, nightclubs, arts venues, theatres, etc. are located. So you really can be on campus and feel very much like you're on campus and then just step off campus and be in the heart of the city. Um, you can go between your class and somewhere to get lunch in like a couple of minutes. And this is the heart of our campus. The, our history dates back to the 1830s, so we have some wonderful historic buildings like the Students' Union there in the foreground, but we obviously have got lots of modern buildings. We invested heavily in the campus over the past few years, and we have things like the National Centre for Data and the National Centre for Innovation in the top left, as well as our Urban Sciences building, which is home to computer science in the bottom right there. We have a very strong academic reputation. We rank in the world top 150. Um, we actually rank in the world top 100 for our research um, output in the Leiden rankings. But in the QS rankings, for example, we're ahead of places like UC Davis, Texas A&M, Pittsburgh, Dartmouth, Vanderbilt, Notre Dame, and Georgetown, just to give you an example. Um, and in the UK, we are in the top 20 with actually 13 subjects ranking in the top 10. Those include things like agriculture, art and design, dentistry, creative writing, um, Asian studies, communication and media studies, psychology, linguistics and sports science. We are also a founding member of the Russell Group, which a lot of people call it the um, UK's version of the Ivy League. Um, it includes places like Oxford and Cambridge. 
We have a number of other rank, uh, rankings and awards as well, um, including being the top 20 most targeted universities in the UK by leading employers and having over 95% of our graduates in work or for further study after just six months. The university has three faculties. We teach 200 bachelor's degrees and 300 master's programs, and we have roughly 27,000 students on campus. Across our three faculties, we offer a huge range of subjects. You can see a number of our uh, academic schools there in our humanities and social sciences, in the science, agriculture and engineering faculty, and finally in our medical sciences faculty. Um, one of the major subjects we don't offer is veterinary science, although we do offer animal science, which is a great pre-vet program, um, but pretty much everything else we do have available. In terms of entry requirements, we're not test optional, but test flexible. What that basically means is whilst we would like to see um, students submitting three AP scores or two APs and an SAT, for example, we will consider things like honours classes, dual enrolment classes, or for example, if you've done the AP class, but maybe haven't taken the AP test, then we would still consider those. So it's worth doing some research on our website to see exactly what's required for your specific program. Like many of the other schools here, we are registered uh, to take US federal loans. Um, we do have scholarships as well. But to give you an example of how much it would cost, roughly speaking, it's about $35,000 a year um, versus our closest ranked US competitor, um, where they would charge roughly $72,000 a year. So you can see it's pretty much half the cost of studying in the US, um, and that's at a private institution. In terms of scholarships, we have a variety of scholarships available. Um, and those do change from year on year, so it's worth doing your research and checking out our websites. We have a whole host of support and facilities available, um, security, disability support, health wellbeing. We have our uh, international team and pre-arrival support, as well as our uh, students' union um, and our sports societies. We actually rank top 10 in the UK for sports. If you'd like to find out more and um, you're not able to visit us, we have lots of virtual activities on our website, and I'll post all those links in the chat box. And if you'd like to get in touch with me directly, that's my email address there. And if you can uh, scan that QR code, then you can sign up for more updates. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Thomas. Um, next, we will hear from Maynooth University. Hi, everybody. Just give me one second. I'll share my screen. Okay, so thanks for um, joining me today. Really nice um, that you could take the time to meet with us. So uh, number one question that I always get is why Ireland? And as you know, as you can probably tell, I'm not um, from Ireland. Um, I'm from Indiana, but I came to Ireland and ended up studying here. Um, and that was a long time ago, but I loved it and ended up staying. So why Ireland? Um, number one, it's number 12 on the Global Peace Index. And I know that's very um, important for both students and parents, which means you have a safe and welcoming environment when you are in Ireland. And simply put, um, the Irish are a friendly, welcoming bunch. And I can attest to that from being an outsider, but being in Ireland now for 21 years. And as an international student, you really do get a lot out of um, the Irish experience. So I just put in a little bit of context because I know I would have needed this when I was um, researching Ireland, is that it's um, about the size of Indiana. So you guys know that's not too far from, from where you are in Illinois. And it's east of, uh, sorry, it's west of Europe. So um, just to give you some context as far as where it is on the map. And to just give you a little idea of where Maynooth University is located as a, um, in relation to Dublin City Center, it's only 15 miles away. And the train station is directly outside the gates of campus. So super easy to get into Dublin City Center but also to go further afield as well. You can go into Dublin and then jump on a train or a bus and go to Galway, Limerick, Cork, um, several other places within uh, Ireland. Ireland is a very small country. So from American standards, it's super quick um, to, to get around and to see a lot of the country while you're here. So just to give you a little bit of idea about Maynooth itself, um, it is a mix of the old and the new. It was established um, in 1795 as St. Patrick's College. That is still um, a college on campus, but then Maynooth University again was established um, 20 years ago. It was part of the National University of Ireland um, campus, sorry, college group, and we became Maynooth University in 1997. 
We really do prioritize the student experience, both academically and socially. We feel that both are very important to you, both as a student and um, as after you graduate as well. We want you to succeed both while you're at attending Monmouth University, and of course, whatever you go on to do um, after you graduate. We are adjacent to what we call um, Ireland's Silicon Valley. So we have a lot of the big tech companies located very close by. Uh, including Intel, HP, Google, and over 50 other giants of industry. So we really are um, kind of in the midst of everything kind of that's going on even globally. So Maynooth University, um, it's Ireland's fastest growing university. It has currently over 13,000 students from 90 countries. About 10% of those are international students. We have over 100 clubs and societies, so you can have that active student experience. And those clubs and societies range from everything from um, sports to table tennis to um, uh, Harry Potter to drinking tea, literally everything that you could think of. We have four faculties, which are the Faculty of Arts, Humanities, Philosophy, Faculty of Social Sciences, and Sciences and Engineering. Within those four faculties, we do have 34 academic departments. So we really have everything that a student could um, want to study. We have most of that available at Maynooth University. So just entry requirements, um, minimum high school GPA of 3.0 out of a 4.0. We are currently test flexible. Um, if you have ACT or SAT scores, um, definitely you can submit those but we know that the difficulty students were having in the past 18 months or so with getting to test centers and taking those tests. So we are still have a test flexible option for um, the, the current year and next year. Um, it's approximately 16,000 to 18,000 US dollars for tuition. And again, I know from experience um, that's very affordable compared to other uh, US universities. So we have an overall cost of attendance of about 34,000 US dollars. Um, again, affordable from, from when you look at the US side of things. We do have several scholarships available. And like the other schools have mentioned, we are also um, FAFSA uh, compliant. So we do accept your direct loans, um, Sally Mae loans, and also the GI Bill. And I can help you with that um, process. So we walk you through all that with you. How do you, you can apply? Um, we do have an online system called PAC and also the, the common application, which you are probably all um, familiar with. Uh, there's no entry visa required for US students coming to Ireland. Um, so it makes that process, process so much easier. You will need to register with immigration once you arrive in Ireland. But again, we have an international admissions team that will help you through that process from beginning to end. The deadline to apply is the 1st of July, and completed applications will usually receive an offer within 14 days. So there's my uh, name again and uh, my, ad my email address. So any questions, let me know. Thanks again for your time. Thank you so much, Patty. Um, next, we'll hear from American College of Dublin. Thank you very much, Brianna. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sarah Healy, and I am the admissions representative from the American College Dublin. Thank you so much for joining all of us today um, and listening to what we have to say about each of our universities. So ACD is located in the heart of Dublin, Ireland. Um, it's a really great, friendly, fun city. Um, and I love to start the presentation out with this picture because I think it gives a really good representation of the city as a whole. Um, as you can see, there's plenty of, plenty of restaurants, pubs, stores, libraries. Um, there's just a ton for you to discover within the city. And if you bring um, your view to the back of the picture, you'll see St. Anne's Church. And this is the church where we hold our formal graduation ceremonies. Um, so there's something for you all to look forward to a little further down the road. So we are an Irish American university, which means that we uphold the standards of accrediting bodies from both Ireland and the United States, um, respectively through the Quality and Qualifications Ireland and Middle States Commission on Higher Education. 
So what this means for you as a student is you can really pick the path that suits you the best. Through the um, Irish accreditation, you would take a three-year undergrad path, um, whereas through the middle states um, accreditation, you would be taking the more standard um, path that you see here in the States, which, which is the four-year um, undergrad. So it really just you know, gives you an opportunity as a student to have some agency um, and realize what fits, what fits best for you. So we are a small school, um, but we're like this by design because we want to be able to offer these really small and interactive lectures for our students. Um, so because of that, our lectures are typically less than 20 students. When I was there um, pre-COVID um, and was able to sit in on a few classes, I would say it's even less, maybe like seven to 12. Um, so this arrangement really allows, like I said, for an interactive experience with tons of discussion, debate, and of course, a sprinkle of Irish wit. <laughs> so Dublin is your campus, and we really, um, we really want to make sure that you all take advantage of this really great city. Um, we want you to be able to go out into the city and explore um, and learn some of the things that you'll also be learning in the classroom. Um, we call it, you know, that aha moment where you find the connection between what you're reading in your textbooks and what you're seeing um, in real life. I want to talk briefly about our administration. Um, so like our classes in our school in general, it is small by design um, with an emphasis on reducing bureaucracy. So what this means is that our offices pretty much operate under an open door policy. Um, all of our students are encouraged to drop by and get to know the staff. We really want to be able to provide as much support for our students as possible um, and to make that, you know, as easy as possible for both us and the students. Um, we do think that, you know, an open, um, open lines of communication are important. So here are the courses that we offer. Um, our three-year bachelor's course, um, which I mentioned about would be through the Irish accreditation. We offer an international business and liberal arts, and then a four-year bachelor's in international business, hospitality management, event management, liberal arts, and then a four-year BFA in musical theater performance and creative writing. So we welcome applicants from every corner of the globe. Um, and because of this, our requirements are aimed at gathering more of a holistic view of the applicant. We really wanna to get to know you, who you are as a person, as a student, your interests, passions, um, what drives you, everything like that. So, oh. So what's required is a minimum 2.0 GPA um, or for any transfer, transfer or mature students, um, a resume or CV and any previous third level transcripts. Um, and then a personal statement that really describes why you would like to study your chosen area at ACD. Um, so this is your opportunity to really paint that vibrant picture of who you are as a student, um, a person. And this is really your chance to let us know who you are um, and why you wanna study at the American College Dublin. We are test optional, we have been forever. Um, so these items will be considered in an application but are not required, a resume, test scores, um, any recognition or awards or any publications. Again, just anything that will help, um, you know, round out the description of who you are as a student. Um, we do operate under rolling admissions. Um, so as you apply, we will get you a response within two weeks, um, just any time that you're ready to apply. And then here are tuition and fees. Um, so our undergrad tuition, for non-European students are 9,000 euro. Um, I don't know the exact exchange right now. Um, and then our BFA is 9,500 euro. And the reason that it's a little bit more is just because different locations you have for classes, um, you know, and, and different things that, that you will need throughout the course. Again, my name is Sarah Healy. I am the admissions counselor for the American College Dublin. Um, there is my email right there, but I will also drop it in the chat. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Sarah. And um, if all of our panelists want to turn on their cameras now, I will ask a couple of questions for the rest of our time together. 
Um, you can answer in the same order in which you presented. Um, so the first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Uh, yeah, my biggest advice would just be just to take as much time as possible and just research as much as you can. Um, like all these universities, you go on the website, there's so much to read and so much to look at. Like it's such an important decision. Just take your time. And also just don't get clouded by like trying to follow your friends. Like I know that can be like such an easy thing where like you want to go where they go or you kind of get sort of like lost in your imagination. Like they might say they want to go somewhere and you're like, I want to go there with them. Like it's such a big decision. It's your thing and it's going to like shape your future. So just make sure you do what's important for you. And like wherever you go, you're going to make friends. So you don't have to worry about that because everyone's going to be in the same situation as you when you get there. So um, yeah, that's me. I would say don't be afraid to ask questions. It's really vital to ask questions. No question is a stupid question. I really live by that. Um, that's what our jobs are here for. That's why we're here, for you to ask us any questions. So just you know, contact all of the, um, the people that you're working with from the university you're applying to, and also even ask questions to current students if you can. A lot of our universities use platforms like Unibuddy where you can chat in live time with current students. And again, they can just answer any questions you have, which will ultimately help in making your decision. You know, I think echoing the sentiment of, you know, Tom and Haley, that's really, you know, kind of what I would say. I think also just making use of events like this, it's a great way of finding out about places you might not normally have heard of. And also, you know, pick a subject that you like. You know, it doesn't have to be, if you don't know what your job is or your, your career goal, you know, do something you like, something you will enjoy and, and you'll find the right path from that, I would say. I think what's quite important when you're looking at universities in England in particular is that you are applying to a major um, specifically. So when you're writing your application, when you're writing your personal statement, it's all about why you want to study that subject and not particularly why you want to apply to that wider university, um, especially if you're applying through something like UCAS. And that's obviously quite different to the US system. So that's something that you should be aware of if you're considering, considering studying in England. So again, just to kind of, I, I agree with everything that's already been said. So all of, all of the above, but also just, um, I think what was already mentioned is ask questions. I mean, we are here to help you with any questions you might have or any questions your parents might have. So feel free to, to reach out to us because that's what we're here for. Yeah, I would, it's tough going last, um, but I would pretty much agree with what everyone um, else has said. We're here as a resource. We're here to help. Um, don't be afraid. I know it can be a very daunting experience. Um, as you can see here, there's tons of universities all over offering different things. Um, so, you know, if you, yeah, if you have questions, reach out because you got to know, you got to know the information. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, thanks everybody for joining us today. Um, when you do close this window, there will be a link for a very quick five uh, question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Uh, we do encourage you to check back the schedule and sign up for more sessions. I know you have a lot of sessions available to you today and later in the week. And you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Illinois. Thanks for coming and thank you to all our lovely facilitators. Um, really enjoyed learning more about your universities. Have a great afternoon.